Yahya al uh, Yahya al Mazni relates that I used to live in the neighborhood of Amir al Mu'minin, Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib, radiallahu anhu. May Allah ennoble his face in Madinah al Munawwarah for quite some time. And it was near the house in which his daughter, and it was near the house in which his daughter Sayyidina Zainab lived, radiallahu anhu. And he says, by Allah, I never saw her. I never heard her voice. When she wished to leave the house to visit her grandfather, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, she would leave the house in the darkness of the night. Imam Hassan radiyallahu anhu would be on her right. Imam Hussein radiyallahu anhu would be on her left. And said Imam Ali radiyallahu anhu would be in front of her. And when they were near the blessed resting place of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, her father would proceed and put out the lamps. On one occasion, he says, I asked Imam Hassan about this. And Imam Hassan replied, radiyallahu anhu, that I fear someone's gaze may fall upon my sister Zainab, radiyallahu anha. It has been related in the traditions that Imam Hussain, radiyallahu anhu, would stand in honor of his sister when she would go to visit him and he would seat her, and he would seat her in his place. Sayyidah Zainab, radiyallahu anha, she was intelligent and was able to provide judicial reasoning. She resembled her father and mother, may Allah be pleased with, with both of them. She resembled them in eloquence, asceticism and courage, and she would manage all the affairs of the Ahl al-Bayt. In fact, for all the uh, Bani Hashem, after the uh, martyrdom of Imam Hussein, she anha, was the most courageous, articulate and eloquent. Her eminence spread far and wide. After she demonstrated her strength and courage at Karbala to the extent that she became a role model. Piety, taqwa, was the mode of her life. Her tongue was always moist with the remembrance of Allah, and for the tyrants it was like a sword and a support for the upholders of truth. She is distinguished in both abodes and tied with manifest and hidden beauty. She is the foremost in determination and generosity. Many would flock to her seeking help and advice. Her house was a refuge for the weak and needy, and she became known as the mother of the feeble. When she migrated to Egypt after the tragedy of Karbala, the rulers and governors would convene their meetings at her house, seeking her advice and authority in matters, and she became as leader of the Dewan, Ra- Raisa to Dewan, the head of the cabinet, and this was because of her wisdom, her intelligence, her astuteness, and her vast and abundant knowledge. Indeed, Sayyidah Zainab anha, acquired her strength and divine inspiration, Ilham, from her blessed grandfather, the Prophet وسلم, along with her noble mother, father, and brothers. May Allah be pleased with them all. She was raised in this divine and sacred household with her sincerity and devoutness. Knowledge and wisdom would emanate from her blessed tongue. It has been related that in her childhood she was sitting in her father's lap playing and said Imam Ali radiallahu said to her say one and she said one he then said say two but she remained silent Imam Ali said speak O coolness of my eye and she replied dear father I am, I am unable to say two with a tongue that only utters one and by this she was referring to the oneness of Allah then her father, may Allah be pleased with him, embraced her and kissed her on her forehead. Many examples of her speech demonstrate that her blessed speech was all through divine inspiration. She would give the explanation of many hadiths and, and advise her noble brothers, Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain. <coughs> the patience of Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu anha. She was exposed to immense hardship throughout her life. She, she lost her grandfather, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, soon after her blessed mother, Sayyidah Zahra radiallahu anha, at the age of five. And then <clears throat> she suffered illness and hardship with little sustenance, with sadness and the loss of her mother and grandfather. Thereafter, the, the responsibility of the household was upon, her oldest, was upon her shoulders at such a young age. But she took care of her brothers and her father, until she suffered the loss of her father, Imam Ali radiallahu anha, who was stabbed. And then she lost her brother Imam Hassan radiallahu anhu. 
and thereafter the tragedy of Karbala took place and she witnessed the loss of her brother Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu anhu who was martyred on the 10th of Muharram 61 Hijri and along with Imam Hussain radiallahu anhu she lost her two sons cousins and nephews as they all suffered with extreme thirst <clears throat> this was followed by the aggression and hostility she endured along with the rest of the Ahl al-Bayt as they were taken as captives moving from country to country with no discernment at all for their blessed prophetic lineage but she endured this with pers- she endured this with patience and consent relying on Allah and knowing that all the affairs are in his hands whilst taking care of all the young ones in the family who were now orphans she was strong and courageous and Karbal- at Karbala she spoke to the blessed parts of a martyred brother's body that had been severed and said oh Allah accept from me this little amount of sacrifice yet she cried and wept for her brother seeking the reward and mercy for those who cry for Imam Hussain as Imam Muhammad al-Baqir radiallahu anhu related the believer whose tears fall for the martyrdom of, Hus- of Hussein and flow, upon- and flow upon their cheeks, Allah houses them in a room in, in, a pa- in paradise for a very long time. Sayyidah Zainab returns to Medina. So when she returns on the authority of Sayyidina Musab ibn Abdullah radiallahu anh, who relates that Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu anh, when she was in Medina gathering the people to avenge for the loss of Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu anh, and at this time, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Zubair was in Makkah and he was gathering the people to take revenge and remove Yazid. News of this reached Medina and Sayyidina Zainab spoke to the people as they were preparing to seek justice. This information reached Amr ibn Sa'id and he wrote to Yazid informing him. Yazid ordered the separation of Sayyidina Zainab from the people and he commanded that she be exiled. They instructed Sayyidina Zainab to leave Medina and that she could move to any other country that she desired. Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu anhu replied that Allah is aware of what we have endured. The best of us have been killed and slaughtered like cattle and thrown in heaps. By Allah, we will not leave even if you spill our blood. And then the women of Bani Hashim consoled her. It has been related by Muhammad Abu Qasim ibn Ali that when Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu anhu arrived from Syria to Medina with the women and children, a fitna arose and the um, <clears throat> the governor of Medina at that time Amr ibn Sa'id al Ashtak, he wrote to Yazid uh, he wrote to Yazid advising him to um, remove Sayyid Azan from Medina and after this incident occurred she radiallahu anha chose to move to Egypt Religion on the authority of Hassan ibn al Hassan who said when my aunt Zainab left Medina, women from the Bani Hashim accompanied her. And there were my cousin Fatima, the daughter of Hussein, and her sister Sukhaina. Related on the authority of, the, of uh, Abdullah ibn Abdurrahman al Ansari, who said that I saw Sayyidah Zainab in Egypt after a few days of her arrival. By Allah, I had not seen anyone who had a face like hers. It was like a phase of the moon. Sayyidah Zainab came to radiallahu anha, she came to Egypt in the uh, month of Shaban in 61 Hijri and the people of Egypt welcomed her with utmost respect and love. The governor, Muslima ibn Khalid al-Ansari, provided a house for her and the people would attend gatherings at the house of Sayyidah Zainab to seek knowledge about the life of a noble grandfather وسلم, to learn hadith and tafsir and the gatherings were radiant with prophetic lights filled with angels reaching as far as the heavens. She, may Allah be pleased with her, was kind and gentle with the people, compassionate, pure, and of excellent character. Many miracles are attributed to Sayyidah Zainab. And it has been related that when she chose to migrate to Egypt, the governor of Medina asked her why she chose Egypt, and she replied, so that when I am in the Bazak after a few years, I want to pay my final respect by welcoming the head Hussein that will pre- that will prevail over you in your history with his pure and innocent blood. Sayyidah Zainab remained as a beacon of guidance for the people of Egypt 
and a Kaaba for the lovers of the virtuous and pure Ahlul Bayt. They felt immense love, reverence and awe towards the Ahlul Bayt. As, as they were a token of purity, courage and self-sacrifice, and because Allah honored them and gave the land of Egypt honor by placing their maqam there. Sayyidah Zainab Radiyallana, she resided in Egypt for just under a year and eventually she became ill and the time was approaching for her to meet her Lord. The people surrounding her wanted to call for a doctor but she refused saying, O oh people, we are not from those who look towards the world and desire to remain in it because we are the family of the Prophet Muhammad The meeting with our Lord is more beloved to us. Doctors cannot delay a person's appointed time. As for their medicines, it is a sedative for illnesses. While the appointed time is that which Allah has written will certainly come to pass. And Sayyidah Zainab radiyallahu anha, may Allah be pleased with her, passed away on the 14th of Rajab. Every year, the, uh, the, the people of Egypt, including the eminent ones, the shiuch, the awliya, the scholars, they hold a gathering and recite the maulid of Sayyidah Zainab radiyallahu anha. Masses of people gather at her sacred maqam and there is recitation of Quran, feeding of people, distribution of sadaqah in our honor. May Allah be pleased with her. Mercy descends, supplications are answered and people's eyes flow with tears. Peace be upon you, Sayyidati. O granddaughter of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam O daughter of the leader of the women of paradise O daughter of Imam Ali Al-Murtada Amir al muminin Sister of Sayyidina Imam Hassan And Sayyidina Imam Hussein The leaders of the youth of paradise May peace be upon your pure soul in the eternal board And may peace be upon the messengers And all praise belongs to Allah Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim هذا ذريه الشقيقة القمرين بنت الإمام شريفة الأبوين. This is the resting place of the sister of the two moons, the daughter of the Imam, the glory of the two noble parents. وسليلة الزهرة بيدة أحمد نور الوجود وسيدة ثقلين. The descendant of Zahra, who is the part of Ahmad, and he is the light of his. He and he is the light of existence and the master of jinn and mankind. Nasabun Karimun Lil Fasihat Zainab Shamsud Duha wa Karim Darain The noble lineage of the eloquent Zainab, the morning sun and honor of both abodes. Rahimullah Zainab Aburakut Misra Bi Majiha Ilaiha. May Allah have mercy on Zainab. Who blessed the land of Egypt with her arrival? Wa akhirat awan alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Jazakallah khairan.